Welcome back, Countdown to the White House. Um, Dean Waters, political strategist, still with us in Kiev, uh, Ukraine. And Joel Cuomo, Duala Cameron, my co-host. Um, Dean, Dean Waters, excellent. And uh, I'm sure um, in the 60s, um, you saw the United States for what it was. And um, you perhaps have a better picture than Angela and I put together <laughs> in what uh, the 60s were and people yeah, like Yeah, man, Angela that's the reality. How old do you think I am? Five. What are your thoughts? Uh, go, go ahead, uh, uh, Dana. <laughs> listen, I, I, I think John Lewis, uh, listen, I was born in 1964 to set the record straight, okay? So I'm not 80, 80 years old. So, um, uh, but I think that, uh, listen, John Lewis was an amazing man. Um, you know, growing up in Alabama, I mean, I saw firsthand racism. I, you know, I grew up with a grandmother, um, I mean, <laughs> for full disclosure, I remember in college, I decided to go out with an African-American girl, and I brought her home to visit my grandmother uh, on her 70th birthday, and my grandmother threw me out of the house, said, how dare I do that, um, and wouldn't talk to me for a year after that. I mean, so racism was alive and well um, in, in Alabama. And then in Mississippi, listen, you know, where they still fly the Confederate flag, um, you go up into the north part of the uh, of, of the state and in, in, in the Delta region, and, and racism is alive and well. So, listen, um, you know, uh, the South and America has come a long way with racism, but there's still so far to go. And um, uh, and I listen, I I, I I grew up in a society where honestly, you know, it, it's you know, it, inside, I, I don't want to belabor this point either. I knew something was wrong when my mother and my grandmother would talk disparagingly about African Americans. I mean, I just felt it was wrong. But at the same time, you, I lived in a society where if you spoke out about it, you were considered, you know, who knows what they would do to you. Uh, but I don't feel that way now in Alabama or in certain parts of Mississippi. So it is changing, but we still have a long way to go. And you have people like John Lewis. Listen. You, you can't beat somebody like John Lewis. I mean, he is somebody that set a standard. And just, you know, he's an orator to the point that um, he just inspires you to want to do what's right. Um, and, he, you know, he's a great loss. Just like John McCain was a great loss in the Senate, John Lewis is a great loss in the House. And we are desperately uh, running out of individuals like them um, to help lead our country. So, mm -hmm. and Jill. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, this is a very sad week, um, not just for America, but for the world, for what he did for the civil rights movement. I mean, we all know that the civil rights has an impact on, on the continent uh, where I was born. And for the record, I'm not far from you, so I'm born in 67, so. <laughs> I always love younger ladies, so there's no doubt about it. So. <laughs> oh, young ladies, okay. Now, okay, you just give me an idea. Talking about American values and American elections and the fact that you know, uh, our leaders should represent the highest moral ethics possible. Uh, so you remember what happened to Clinton and the entire scandal here in Africa? People say, oh, these people, white people have nothing to do. They have no issue. They're spending a lot of money on the scandal, on the, on the Clinton scandal, and they should spend that money on addressing other issues. So now we have uh, a Trump who has grabbed them by the P, still got elected. And then now, uh, more recently, I was watching the documentary on, uh, on Jeffrey Einstein, yeah. Einstein or Einstein? Epstein, Epstein, yeah. Yeah, yeah, who came out uh, on Netflix. And <laughs> I don't know what to think about the American system, but if you were in, in Africa, people would think uh, the guy was assassinated because that would have happened to him in Africa. If he was African, he would be dead the next, next day, and nobody would even go to court. Uh, so, and have you seen the documentary that you have from uh, Clinton went there? Uh, so how do you think is the coming out of that documentary can really in, impact or influence people voters or people really don't care now with, after having Trump at, in the White House? Sadly, sadly, I don't think people listen. I watched the same. I, I watched the same thing on Netflix, and, and it, it's, it's, it was very disturbing in so many ways. Um, and I think since uh, Giselle Maxine is now in custody, I think a lot of people are scared about what's going to happen. And it's inter interesting if you if you saw Donald Trump the other day, they asked him about her. And he said he wishes her well. He, um, you know, and and I mean, listen, you have a person who is basically accused and of 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 taking underage girls um, for, for sex trafficking. I mean, there's no other way to put around it. And, and and Donald Trump did not 
in that interview when he was asked say anything derogatory about what Jeffrey Epstein did um, at all. Oh. And unsaid all he said was he said uh, that he feels, uh, you know, he wishes her the best. So, no, I, th I think sadly, and it really is disgusting for me. Listen, uh, you know, listen, not that I'm the most moral human being in the world, not that I live on some, you know, some some pedestal somewhere. But the reality is, uh, but the reality is, is that uh, the country is just going in a direction that, that really scares me. And I'm, I'm, I'm sad in the fact that things like Jeffrey Epstein and what he did uh, is not uh, impacting the election more than it should. So, yeah, I mean, I mean that, that, that was just a, such a horrendous yeah. um, story and, and the consequences, um, uh, Dane. But, but talk, talking about things influencing the election, you know, the 2016 election and all that played out with. Um, uh, the Russian situation, interesting, you, you're neighboring Ukraine there. And yeah. I listened to Joe Biden a couple of um, days ago, uh, putting out, reading out a route act to Russia saying they will not take any interference from uh, Russia in the elections on the 3rd of November. What, what are your thoughts in terms of uh, what people talk about foreign influence in the elections in the United States? You think it's exaggerated or you think it's something uh, that calls for consent? Well, listen, I think I, I definitely think that uh, there's a lot of background noise going on here. Um, I, um, I I definitely think that the Russians had an influence in the 2016 election, um, uh, and I do think that it was it was, you know really made a difference as far as Donald Trump's election. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and listen, we have in this election cycle. I mean, listen, there you know the Chinese are playing in the election, the the Russians are playing in the elections, the North Koreans are playing in the election. I mean, listen, but I, I will tell you that what's happened with social media, with Twitter no longer taking political ads, and Facebook now limiting the amount of political ads that can take place. I do think that that influence in the social media world has been lessened. Listen, one of the reasons I'm here in Ukraine is because of the what I believe is one of the serious. Um, possibilities that Russia is going to invade eastern Ukraine um, because of the weakness of President Trump in October and November. So that's one of the issues that here that, I, that I'm working on uh, because I think it's of great concern. Um, and what sadly, I just don't think that many Americans are talking about that. And, but then you counter, you see what's happening in the South China Sea with the Chinese and what the Secretary of State is doing. I would not put it past President Trump. Uh, because he's making China an issue between Biden and himself. But you may see some conflict between uh, the United States and China just as a way to show that he's powerful uh, and that he's taking the Chinese situation seriously. So, listen, not necessarily, we have to look at foreign influence in the election, not necessarily as actual ads, actual what they're doing um, on social digital media. We have to look at the impact of the international uh, uh, international politics and how presidential candidates act. And I think Donald Trump is using international relations and politics as a way to to to, to better his standing uh, among the conservative base in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Angel. But um, it looks like we're going to have Angel there. But, so, but definitely something to think about, um, what you have going on, um, you know, all across. Um, I've, I've also had, um, you know, when you look about the, the effort that was put into the elections um, after 2016 by Congress, and the special investigative um, panel trying to find out whether there was any collusion with Russia and the rest of them. I'm sure they're probably thinking, heaven forbid this plays out again, but it's still something to think about in terms of what um, impact it will have in the minds of um, the Democrats. Because I, I also did hear the Democrats say they're preparing uh, for a disaster situation if, for example, the elections happen and Donald Trump refuses to hand over uh, because of a number of complaints over the million ballot and all of all those other things uh, he thinks. Are, 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 they, are they in a state of paranoia to think that um, uh, Donald Trump uh, could say, I would not accept the results of the election? And so, uh, look for any other way to make my decision go through. Well, listen, I think one of the, diff one of the di differences in this election is you're going to have um, a higher percentage of people voting by mail than ever before. Um, and then in many of these states, uh, as long as your ballot is postmarked on election day or the day before election day, you can send it in, which is going to delay the results, um, I think, in many of these areas for up to a week. Um, and I, I, and I, So it's not going to be like it was in the past where you have major news outlets doing exit polls to say who's going to win the election. Um, you know, um, I just don't, it's just, it's not going to be as cut and dry as it was uh, in all previous elections. So I think the fact that it's going to be drawn out um, is, is going to, um, uh, I think Donald Trump is going to make that an issue. I think Donald Trump's going to say that there's a lot of um, 
um, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, criminality associated with the, the vote by mail, uh, illegals voting vote by mail. So, so I don't see it as a clean process, even, even though I, I do believe, as I said, that he's going to lose by a large percentage electorally. I think we're going to be in a position where we won't know who actually is the next president of the United States for at least, you know, a, a, a 10 days to two weeks after the election. Mm. Mm. Angel. Mm. Yes, um, I think it's my, maybe my last question because we're going to be running out of time. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. okay. So given the fact that things are getting worse, you know, we still have more cases. Uh, 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 COVID-19 cases, we see an employment issue not you know, being resolved. Who knows what will happen? So you just imagine in, in the, the scenario where by September things are really getting bad and people are getting very nervous. Is there a possibility the Congress will consider a new stimulus? If that's the case, you know, in the African context, it will be considered as a bribe, official bribe, into funeral money to the electoral committee, to, to, the, to, the, to, um, to people uh, 90 days or 60 days before the election, it could be problematic. But uh, we still have a scenario where we have we have to consider uh, stimulating the economy again uh, by September. What do you think? No, I think I think there definitely will be another stimulus package. I think Mnuchin came out today no. and yesterday. Well, I mean, he came I out. Him again. Um, um, my words of wisdom. You're missing my pearly words of wisdom there, but. Um, no, I think there will be another economic stimulus, but I think that those are going to impact and help um, more the Senate candidates and congressional candidates um, than it will the President of the United States. Um, uh, because, I mean, what, you know, so once again, I think that that actually goes more to the African American vote and the Latino vote, uh, who may get stimulus check, uh, checks um, that you know they might be swayed one way or another. But but I don't see that it's going to have a wholesale impact on how people vote on election day. Uh, to be honest with you. All right. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dane Waters. Uh, Dane, Dane Waters, political strategies, countdown to the White House. How to show? How to show? Um, so, are you finished with me? Is that what you're telling me? You're done with me? <laughs> All right. Don't I'm, go I'm going to. I'm going to cry right. now. Anyway, thanks a lot. I always enjoy it. Take care. Uh, okay. I, I was just just before you just before you oh. go. Uh, just before you go, I, I was just going to just ask me to ask you something on what you on what you think um, the people in Ukraine think about the elections uh, coming up in the United States on the third of November. Um, I, I think that they're they're. Uh, it's an interesting question. It depends on who who you who which which group that you you know. Listen, you have the you have a, a very strong pro Russia faction in, in Ukraine, especially east of the Dnipro, which is basically east of Kiev. Um, I think that they're. Uh, I think that they want to continue seeing Donald Trump as president of the United States. Um, I think there's a lot of concern about uh, if Joe Biden's president, uh, whether or not he will still give the amount of support uh, to Ukraine uh, that the Trump administration now is giving and Congress is now giving because of. I mean, listen, if nothing positive came out of the out of the uh, whole investigation, is that Ukraine actually benefited from it because the Senate now and others can't just say no to Ukraine, so they've benefited from some military support and military aid. But listen, I think they're very concerned. There's a growing, growing concern about the invasion, about a possible invasion of the Russians in the country, um, and they're concerned about the election more so because of the instability it's going to cause in the world um, uh, and make it more difficult for the international community to come in and stop any aggression by Russia. So that's um, and that's why they, they believe that it would be better if Donald Trump continues, because that continuity, there won't be this lame duck period, and so that continuity will make it more difficult for Russia to, to uh, take control of eastern Ukraine. So that's, that's their interest in the election. All right, Dane Waters. And, and now this for the wrap on countdown uh, to the White House. The Congressional Black Caucus, the caucus made up of most African-American members of the United States Congress, uh, the caucus describes its goals as possibly influencing the course of events pertinent to African Americans and others of similar experience and situation. Uh, Representative Karen Bass from California has chaired the caucus since 2019, and recently the caucus was vociferously rather against President Trump's plan to veto a defense bill to keep military bases such as Fort Bragg, named after Confederate officers. Here's Karen Bass. It's curious to me that we would actually have military institutions named after traitors. And so the president has said that he's going to veto it, but we know that we never know what the president is going to do from one minute to the next. 
And so I would find it hard press that he would actually veto that bill because he wants traitors to continue being on the name of our military institutions. And yes, and absolutely, it's bipartisan support. Just absorb for a minute what it feels like to be, to know that our ancestors built the Capitol. And as we spend every day in the Capitol to walk past statues of people who didn't even feel we were human, who wanted us to be in chains. And so reckoning with that and coming to grips and moving those statues away will be extremely meaningful. Importantly, we are the cusp of August, the Democratic Party's convention where Democratic Party candidate Joe Biden will be unraveling his vice president candidate. Earlier on, we caught up with the chair of the Congress, Black Congress caucus, rather, Karen Bass, and asked her about Congress and her female vice presidential candidate uh, for Joe Biden. Interestingly, Karen Bass has been listed among possible options for Joe Biden. Here's Karen Bass in Countdown to the White House. Committee on Africa, I think it is so consistent, you know, for the 49 years that the Black Caucus has been in, consist had been in existence, has always supported issues on the continent. And so I'm honored to have that responsibility now. And we do have a little over 100 days until the next election. And I just want you to know that people in the United States know how significant this election is. The last three and a half years have just been tragic in terms of the United States and our reputation around the world. And now facing the fact that in a little over four months, we have lost 135,000 Americans to the COVID virus because the president had no strategy and continues to have no strategy as to how he addresses the virus. So all efforts are focused on having President Biden raise his hand in January of 2021 to make sure that he will be the next president of the United States. That will bring tremendous relief to our country and I believe to Africa as well. A, a, a great way for us to start off, um, Karen Bass. Now, vice, uh, uh, candidate of the Democratic Party and former Vice President Joe Biden has announced he will have a female as his running mate uh, when the ballot opens on the 3rd of November. What does this mean for you as an African-American woman? Um, a number of reports have mentioned that you've been shortlisted as a possible option. Uh, what does it mean for you and what does it mean also to, uh, for minority you know, uh, in, in the United States? First of all, I really appreciated the fact that the vice president has committed to putting a woman on the ticket. And of course, I want to see it be a woman of color and an African-American woman. And I will tell you that there are African-American women that are on that list that um, are very, very strong and I think will, be rep will represent the country very well. In terms of the specifics regarding me, you know, we don't really get into that. But uh, I believe that a woman being vice president, it will be historic. Now, I have to say, we're a bit behind the continent of Africa in terms of the United States. The uh, uh, Africans have already had women heads of state. And, uh, and I know that there have been prime ministers, presidents, you know, et cetera. So we need to catch up to the rest of the world. I just want to thank all of the people of Africa for having solidarity with black Americans, knowing what we go through here mm -hmm. in regard to our police and mm -hmm. after the vicious murder of George Floyd to know that all of the countries on the continent of Africa stood up in support of black Americans and went to the United Nations. On behalf of the National Black Caucus, I tell black people everywhere about this and I just want to thank you. I'm so sorry that I have to jump off now. Um, in our COVID, we go from Skype to Skype, but I hope you'll Thanks. invite me back and I can join you again soon. All right, Karen Bass, Chair, Congressional Black Caucus. Um, Dane Waters, still here with us, and Jill Cuemo, my co-host. Uh, Dane, your final thoughts. <laughs> I see you smiling from ear to ear. Uh, I always smile when I'm on the show. Um, my final thoughts. I think that, listen, I, 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 sadly, in all seriousness, I think that if you, 
the world um, the world is in is in one of the worst spots it has been um, in multiple generations. I think that you um, uh, I mean as 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 was just uh, the, the the speaker was just talking about. Um, uh, I mean, race relations in the United States is 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 that's finally being dealt with. But at the same time, I think that it is a very volatile situation. Um, I think that if you um, if you take that and the fact that Donald Trump, uh, I think, is going to do everything in his power to polarize the election even more so than he has, just like he did with the Mexican Ameri- I mean, Mexican community, Hispanic community, um, um, in the previous election. I think you're going to be looking honestly at conflict, you know, um, with China. You're going to look at conflict in, in Eastern Europe. I think that, listen, it, 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 you know, you look at COVID and you look at the economic impact of that. And, you know, if we don't have another stimulus package, I mean, the economic impact is going to be 20 fold because people will not be able to pay their credit cards will not be able to pay their rent, will not be able to pay, you know, um, for the basic services that they need. Um, it's going to be such a dismal um, situation. I mean, listen, America is going to survive. I mean, the world will survive. Uh, do I think that uh, come 2021, will the world look totally different than it does even now? I do believe so. Uh, and it's sad, which is why what the world needs more than ever are leaders, true leaders, regardless of political party. I don't care if, you know, if, if they're independent, they're libertarian, if they're, you know, um, constitutional law party. I don't care. We just need leaders, people who are willing to listen and to lead and to, and to give the guidance to the American public that they need and, and someone who the American public can trust. And the last thing I'll say is that I do think it's time for a, a, a woman vice president and a woman president. I mean, listen, I, I, I look around the world as well here in Europe, you know, you know, we have so many, you look at Angela Merkel, you look at so many, it's, it's, it's beyond, um, uh, it's beyond, I just don't understand why we've never had a, a female president, but you're seeing more and more female governors in the United States, which I think is, is a, a telltale of what's happening in the future. So, I hate to paint such a grim picture, uh, but I do think it's important that we all realize what's coming about and uh, that we all prepare for it. Um, And I think that uh, who we choose as our leaders, not only in the United States, but around the world is going to make a fundamental difference in the next six to 10 months in this world. All right. Very well said. How how time flies when you're having a great, great discussion. And Dane Waters, political strategy is always a pleasure having you here. And we hope to see you again sooner rather than later. I'm always here for you, man. Anytime you need me. So that's a little countdown to the White House. We'd like uh, once again to thank Dane Waters, our guest, uh, as well as Karen Bass, Congressional uh, Chair of the Black Caucus. We can also watch previous episodes of Countdown to the White House on our YouTube channal. Tweet at us at Silbert News 24 I am Aogo Obo.